So the fall is here and bass fishing has started to become, well, confusing. I bet you I can speak for more people than just myself when I say that fall fishing can be confusing and definitely is very hard to find consistency in catching bass anywhere across the country. There are so many topics that I could cover when it comes to fall fishing and we're going to get to all of them. We're going to get to my top lures in every single category for the fall, but I want to do one overarching video right at the beginning of this fall here in Texas talking about three key things you must understand about fall fishing before you go out there and have a successful day. And as always, my name is Tyler and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My name is Tyler and I make it my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers. So if you're all about that mission, that goal of becoming a better angler, hit that subscribe button to join Team TRF. Hit the join button as well to get some extra content every single month and uh, let's jump into the conf stinking confusing fall fishing. If y'all follow my channel for a long time, you know that I love to mix together basically every type of instructional channel out there into one. So some channels focus mainly on uh, rods, reels, lures, tackle, that kind of thing. Some channels basically just show a guy going on the water, catching fish, and teaching you as he fishes. I love to combine both of those together, showing you guys fish catches at the end of the video and sitting down at the beginning telling you guys how we're going to end up catching those fish. But several times throughout the year, I have to sit down and I have to make a video explaining what this season is all about. What this time of the year that we are entering into means for you as an angler and how that should adjust how and where you fish. So today's video topic is about the fall. Where do bass go? What does that fall transition mean? And what are my three main takeaways I think you guys should understand before you can have some successful days out on the water. The fall transition. That is the transition from summer to fall. And what that means is, is you have some cold fronts blowing in. So usually, you know, four to five main cold fronts with a few other small ones will kind of transition you from hot, hot summer to a nice brisk, you know, fall day. Where in Texas, that means, I don't know, 70 to 85 degrees outside. In Minnesota, fall might mean 45 to 65 outside. So I hesitate when I'm talking about seasons to really try to be uh, so sure about things because I know that weather and water conditions vary vastly across the country uh, depending on how you define the word used. So fall is really just a range of, of cold fronts that, that transition from always being hot, keeping those fish out, out deep to water starts to drop and those fish start to kind of spread out, move shallow and start to feed to get ready for the winter. So theme number one I want you guys to understand about fall fishing is that consistency is going to be very hard to find. The fish are everywhere in every aspect of that word. So let's hop on the front deck and talk about that. So before we jump into my action items for fall fishing, you really have to understand what I just talked about, which is that the bass are all over the place. You know, I, I talked about it a little bit in my fall reaction baits video, and that's really the reason why you throw so many reaction moving style lures is because these fish are changing locations, changing mindsets, changing what they eat all over the place throughout the fall, and they are not a coherent group of dudes. Most of the time, bass in the fall do not adhere to the same uh, group school structures as they did in the spring and the summer. Bass oftentimes in the fall will go from being all stacked up in one small area of grass or one offshore rock pile or rock vein and they'll spread out all over the place. Some will go shallow, some will stay deep, some will go on the other side of the lake. I mean, fall bass go everywhere, and this applies to you guys in ponds as well. Now, the change in ponds for fall fishing is not nearly as drastic as it is for lakes, so I'll probably do a separate video on fall fishing in ponds. But with the bass in the fall being all over the place, you have to allow your mind to be all over the place. You cannot get cemented into one certain fishing technique or lure and think that you're gonna be able to catch fish like that all fall long. It's just, it's not gonna happen. I wish it was, especially in Texas, the fish are not on the same lures basically ever. I mean, like, I mean, I'll find certain areas where the fish are biting the square bill in one area of the lake, and then I go to some place that looks exactly identical, and the fish do not bite it. They want something slow, or they want a completely different reaction bait. The fall is really just a, a melting pot of changing conditions, uh, fish behaviors, water, weather, all that stuff changes so much in the fall. And 
one reason why I think the fish change more in the fall than they do any other time of the year is because cold fronts happen in the fall at a higher rate. Cold fronts can happen any time of the year. In the winter they can, of course, but the fish in the winter are already used to that. So cold fronts don't really affect them all that much. Uh, in the spring, cold fronts are bad because you have the water warming up and a cold front will kind of knock it back a few degrees. But I do not think it is possible, maybe it's possible, but I've never seen a situation where water temperature can rise 18 degrees overnight from a warm front. But this fall in Minnesota, I experienced an 18 degree water temperature drop from a major cold front. And so fall just gives those fish way more opportunities to be wild and move all over the place because that is what the weather and the, uh, the water temperature is doing. So today in Texas, water is 71, had a little cold front roll through, dropped it four or five degrees. And uh, I think we are almost time for fall here in Texas. So let's sit back down on the deck and talk about tip number two for fall fishing success. The second theme that I want you guys to understand is that in the fall, you have to be a lot more of an on the fly sort of fisherman. So the conditions change, the weather changes, you have to be willing to change and be versatile with those conditions and not be stuck in one specific pattern. As weird as it sounds, you kind of have to allow your mind to wander. And what the heck does that mean? I'll top on the front deck and talk about that too. So this bank right here is a prime example of what I mean by junk fishing. Uh, in the fall, you've got to throw, I'm going to throw a bunch of fishing terminology at you guys. You got to throw the kitchen sink at them which means everything you've got in your kitchen sink, you gotta give the fish a chance to see that and maybe decide to eat that. And so I just fished through a, uh, an area of, of flooded trees. So I had my Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter flipping jig. Now I've been throwing a chatterbait out in the open here, seeing if there's any fish that are kind of cruising along this break line, feeding on bait fish. And then as you might be able to see here in a second, we have some riprap rocks that I'm gonna pull out the square bill for. So areas like this are actually pretty good for trying to figure out what your local fish are doing because you can fish, you know, three, four, five different lures in a several hundred yard stretch. And if you get a bite on one of those things, it's probably gonna be what uh, at least the majority of fish are doing at that specific time in your lake. Not to say it can't change in a, a, a minutes or an hour's time, but at least you'll be able to find some consistency when you get that first bite. So, man, perfect example here. Again, I'm gonna, Troll on up here, throwing the square bill along these rocks. Always keeping my eyes peeled, as I talked about. You want to make sure that your mind is all over the place and not locked in. I'm always thinking I could throw a, a jig over there. I could skip that dock over there. Uh, looks like a nice sand flat over here. I could maybe throw a, I don't know, let this crankbait or something over. Always trying to think of the next thing while still staying present and, and focused on what I'm doing here. All right, nothing on the square bill. We're going to set that down and pick up the old jig. Gonna get the old jig. Oh, that was close, but no cigar. Well, this is not uh, this is not my best performance. That's another thing about fall fishing is that you have to be on top of your game when you're fishing in the. Oh my gosh, I am not on top of my game. Well, you you get the picture. You got to try a bunch of stuff. As I mentioned, the kitchen sink. The fall time of the year is definitely when I have the most uh, rod and reel combos on my deck. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got nine on my deck right now. I guess that's, that's kind of kind of average, but I could have a few more, especially if I was fishing a clear water situation. I would totally have two or three spinning rods that have a shaky head, I have a, uh, a wacky worm, uh, might have a, a small swim bait on a jig head, that kind of thing. You really want to be as versatile as possible. I know a lot of you guys out there don't have tons of rod and reel combos, uh, so make it do with what you have, but just be willing to, to switch around. Do not lock yourself into one pattern of lure because inevitably those bass are going to change and uh, you have to change with them. So right here, perfect situation for a swim jig. Oh, that was not a good cast. I am, so y'all haven't fished in like a week and a half, so I'm kind of off my game. There we go. Swim jig goes up in there in the lay downs. And I'm just trying to figure out these bites. Haven't gotten one single bass bite today. You know, it's Texas, there's, there's fish here, but uh, you just really gotta keep trying things. And eventually I'm gonna stumble upon something. Fall can be really, really discouraging, especially for me because I just left the north. I spent almost the whole summer up north. Bass were relatively easy to catch. They were all, you know, two to three pounds, a ton of fun. And then I get down here and I stink and cast at a tree every time. So this side of the river uh, now got shallow. So I'm actually gonna move to the outside bend of the river because I know the water is deeper on this side than it is on that side. We're gonna see if the fish are on the deep side. I'm actually gonna fish a little bit slower on these docks with, uh, with the flipping jig. See if these bass are not quite in a 
active feeding mood, which I know is, is rare. Most of the time in the fall they are, but you know what? The fall is all about being versatile. Being versatile. And theme number three that I have for you guys is that you have to find the bait fish. I'm not gonna sit back and tell you that in every single body of water, in pond, river, lake, stream, uh, they're always gonna be chasing bait fish in the fall. There's gonna be times when they transition to crawfish, when they're feeding on bluegills. It all depends on your body of water. But in all my travels across the country, when that water temperature starts to drop, those fish, at least in my experience, move off of the deep crawfish and, and, and bluegill sort of bite and onto chasing bait fish. Now I'm talking about any kind of bait fish, what that means is anything that's small and white. Not necessarily small, but anything that's cylindrical and white. So you got threadfin shad, you got minnows, you got uh, herring, you've got you know gizzard shad. Literally any anything that looks like a minnow in any size is going to be what I call shad. And so there's two main ways to find that. First is with your eyes. Most people that are watching my channel right now don't have the electronics that I do to be able to find bait fish that are underneath the water. And so when you're fishing down the bank, when you're walking the bank, or you're just kind of trolling with your boat along the shoreline, or even out in the open on a, on a rock flat, something like that, and you see anything flickering on the top of the water. So any bait fish that are being chased that kind of jump. Uh, sometimes bait fish aren't even chased by anything. They're not even scared. They just kind of flicker around on the top of the water uh, for whatever reasons they do that. And so it allows you, by keeping your eyes open and staying aware, as I talked about earlier, letting your mind wander, also letting your eyes wander, so you are uh, aware of where those bait fish are because I guarantee you the bass are not far away from those. There's gonna be times where you find so much bait fish has moved into a pocket, into a back of a creek, that there's just so much of it, there's not really a way to pinpoint it, but at least you know that you're in the right area, and that once you kind of pick apart that area, you will eventually find where those bass are located. Like I said, not every time in the fall you're gonna have bass feeding on bait fish, but most of the time that is a really, really good place to start to find the consistency that we are looking for as bass anglers. Before we hop on the front deck and I show you guys how my fishing went today, Spoiler alert, I had a big one on the line. Gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of some content I have coming up. So when it comes to fall fishing, there are so many different types of lures. I'm gonna talk about my favorite finesse fall lures. I'm gonna talk about my favorite shad imitation. So that, you know, when you're targeting those bait fish eating bass, uh, which lures I like to throw both in the reaction sense and in the more finesse sense to trick those bass into eating. And of course, we're gonna have some awesome videos of me just going out there having some Hopefully, fingers crossed, great fall fishing days, even though in Texas the fall is definitely a confusing time. So I'll top on the front deck, see some fishing action, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. There's one. Gosh, took me all day. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one on a deep dock. Interesting. Oh my gosh. No. Ah. The five pounder. I don't know what the heck happened there. I just, he, he just jumped and I pulled it right out of his mouth. Dang it. Well, sometimes in the fall, you have to fall back on your confidence techniques. And for me, that's skipping docks with the jig. And I've skipped plenty of them, but I get to some deeper docks with some good structure and rock around them. And there was a big one. There's a fish. Is that a fish or a stick? Hey, it's a fish, I think. Yes, it is. It's a bass. No, when you got off too. Oh, it's the worst. I hate this day. There's one. Ah. I must have had a frayed line. Because we don't have any pike down here to blame. <laughs> 